Hello everyone, my name is Storyweaver, and I saw a video, like two weeks ago, but it came out two weeks ago, I probably saw it like, about that time too, probably, I don't know, times are weird on YouTube, called, Where Did Breezy Come From? And in this video, I'll leave a link in the description below. This person goes through how did they make their OC and what their OC means to them. And I thought, because you guys saw glimpses in my past, I post things like that all the time. That was a weird long time ago and I want to do kind of a re-update, a re-upload, re-update, whatever you want to say, my brain dumb. About how I made my OC and why I have the issues I have and some more about myself now that I am comes to terms with myself somewhat. Let's start with some basic things. I'm not afraid to give my name out. My, not my full name, but I'll just give you what people call me. Usually people would call me Matt. My name is Matt. Uh, I had a lot of different names on this YouTube channel. If you remember a long time ago before I changed it, it was Spitfire. Which was my old, old gamer tag from the old Xbox days. And because I liked Spitfire at the time and I wanted to have a mascot of some sort, which was kind of weird to use Spitfire, but she was my favorite pony. So, except for Rarity. So, I didn't want to use Rarity because that would be too on the nose. So I used Spitfire. Until I was like, I I'm tired of using Spitfire, let me actually start reading designing my OC, which I did, and with some help from fellow artists and friends, I was able to get some, uh, just a quick, uh, drawing from them to use in thumbnails from now on. That is my OC right now, who I've had for a while, just haven't used in videos for a while, but I have him for a lot of reasons. I was a late bloomer to the MLP fandom. I heard about it in late 2010, but never checked anything out, except the music. I have I didn't watch the show. I didn't do anything. I just watched the music. I mean, watch the music, listen to the music, because I just was curious. And I looked up MLP on YouTube to see what would pop up, and reactions popped up, which I didn't really check out, and then. Uh, music. So I just jammed out to the music, which I thought was great. And some of those songs I still listen to to stay in there still on my playlist. Because they're awesome songs. But then, uh, during this time it was kind of rough for me because I was in high school at the time going to uh, a new type of school that I have never been to. Which was a kind of uh, school where you do a program in school and I wanted to be manly because I've been listening to all this MLP stuff and I wanted to do what the family tradition is which was uh, I wanted to be into the construction business which I am still in. Not as much but after all I am now or just a hobbyist thanks to the coronavirus which is Great, but now I'm just a hobbyist and I love, and that's what got me into, always been a hobbyist, always been a painter, always been into D&D &D and nerdy shit like that and geeky crap. But like I said, this time it was also rough because I was discovering more about myself. One of those things was that I am bi and most likely I am pan. Which was kind of hard at first, not being, well, I am not attracted to uh, physical aspects of people. Well, not exactly, but it's kind of hard to explain. I, am, I lean more towards a personality than t physical looks. So, that's my thing. Uh... But yeah, being someone who liked both, you know, whoever, male, female, trans, uh, you know, Apache helicopters, I 
was kind of going through this weird phase of not knowing what to do. I grew up in a Christian household. How could I tell my mom and her boyfriend that I was basically bi? I didn't want to tell them that I was like that. I didn't know what the word was at the time. I was like, I'm just a bisexual. How do I tell these people that I was bi. They thought I was probably gay. They thought I liked dicks. But how could I tell someone like that until I found the show and then eventually the fandom and found that more people like me existed where they basically were using the brony fandom to come out of the closet. Um, but I told them that I was into the show. I watched it, finally, and really liked it. And they were very skeptical at first, but my mom is very supportive, which we'll come back to. I already said all this in my other video, but she is super supportive of everything I do. Craft uh, my hobby stuff, walking, watching MLP, and being, well, I told her I was bi, which, you know, I now I understand that I'm pan but at the point I was I just told her I was bisexual well she completely uh, stood by and didn't judge me didn't trespass me she saw me for her son and did not do anything you know you know she supported that aspect of myself which I'm really grateful for that And I also have, and that's why I don't like showing, I, if you watch my videos, I used, I have it showed my face. And then I was like, I need to get a face cam. I want to do this. And it was early videos, I don't even look at the camera probably. I don't even know what a camera was. I know people use face cams a lot. I was just self-conscious about myself. And I still am. Why do you think I make fun of myself? Because I'm an idiot. And a fucker. But, um, I have a lot of self-hate. I hate my body. I hate myself. I hate everything about me. So having someone where, oh, a, a Sona, for Sona, Pony Sona, just something I can have as a physical attitude of myself that I want to be, that I want to achieve was great and I did not know about that stuff and then the furry fandom happened oh gosh but uh, I was a furry before I was a brony which I didn't tell either of my parents well my dad was gone by this point so I, did, I only had to tell my mom which I didn't tell her that until I told her that I was a brony I told her I was a brony and a furry at the same time, but she didn't know what a furry was. And it was kind of hard to explain, but I think she kind of understood it. But yeah, having living in a Christian household did take a toll on my mental health because I did, for a long time, before I even came out, I just had to deal with it. I couldn't express myself with anything dealing with the LGBTQ plus community at all. Where else get chastised for it? Which I'm super open about it. But I was never open about it back in those days. Now I'm just kind of going on a rant because I don't write scripts. No scripts here. So, yeah. Anything else? See, that's why I need scripts so I can actually... I was going, you know, off the cuff. But yeah, and then, you know, I have, like, a lot of issues in that can go into anxiety for me. Uh, mostly social anxiety for me. Except I hate myself, and I hate when people... I just think people just hate me, and again, that goes into me hating myself, which leads to... A lot of crazy things happening. Uh, 
I have never attempted to, you know, off myself or take my own life. Have I ever thought about it? Oh, maybe. Probably a couple of times. Would I ever act upon those? Not at all. And I hope you guys never feel the urge to hurt yourself in any way possible. But I created Story to be a something I want to achieve and something that I can have as a self-insert, which is what a persona and a sona is. It's supposed to be what you see yourself as in that world. And for me, the My Little Pony world was somewhere where you could be whoever you wanted to be. There was no, you know, racist, no people who would judge you for being gay. You know, they wouldn't judge you for being a sexual deviant or, you know, be a Apache helicopter. No, in the MLP world, you could be anything you wanted and you wouldn't be judged for it. And that's what I wanted to be in at that time, being someone who wanted to be a pony. But yeah, that was just my ramblings, and I hope you guys enjoy the video of me just rambling about shit. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful 2021, and I hope everything turns out better. Fuck me, this was cringy. See you guys in the next video. Peace out. Remember, stay home. Stay safe.